We're back with the last in our series on stepper motor driver upgrades. And today the LV8729 is going head to head with all of the TMC drivers. A little while back, I did a three part series on stepper motor driver upgrade options. Part one covered the A4988, the DRV8825, and the TMC2100. Part two covered the TMC2208, and part three covered the TMC2130s as found in the Prusa Mark III. In the last video, I mentioned the idea that floats around that TMC drivers are not suitable for the extruder, and that instead you should use LV8729s. Well, in this video, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step guide on how to fit those, and then I'll put them through the same tests as all of the other stepper motor drivers. And then we'll finish by comparing all of these drivers to each other, now that I've done some more extensive and long-term testing. Let's start with a few reminders. You can't perform this upgrade if you're running a main board with integrated stepper motor drivers like the Ender 3. Instead, you need a ramps or ramps compatible board where there's a slot to plug in a separate stepper motor driver and you can change them at will. This guide is based on the MKS Gen L and I previously made a guide on how to fit this to an Ender 3. A reminder that like with the TMC drivers, the boards are manufactured by a range of people, but it's the actual chip in the middle that is persistent. In this video, I'm working with a big tree tech version. Okay, we're ready to go. So let's take this LV8729 and look at how to configure it for the default 1 to 16 microstepping so it can be a drop in replacement. We're going to look at jumper settings, setting the VREF, as well as any firmware changes required. The LV8729 is ping compatible with the A4988 and therefore it is a plug and play option. A summary of this stepper driver is as follows. It can do up to 1 to the 128th native microstepping, but more on that later. It is cheaper than some of the TMC offerings. It is quieter than an A4988, and it has higher resolution microstepping without needing any additional wiring. It isn't as quiet as TMC stealth chop mode, especially in the normal 1 to 16th microstepping mode. One nice thing about this stepper driver is unlike some of the TMC offerings, we don't need to solder any pads on the board to change the configuration. Instead, all we need to do is change the jumpers on the main board like we do with other steppers. We're going to start by targeting 1 to 16th, and to do that, we have low, low, high. If you find that confusing, here it is in action. On your main board, in the socket for the stepper motor drivers are three jumpers. By default, they'll all be in place and we're going to remove the first two closest to the capacitor. On the main board at the base, you can see direction and ground are labeled, yet on our stepper motor driver board, this is not there. Instead, we need to refer to the wiring diagram, and we can see on my version, it's down the trim pot end. There can be variation between the manufacturers, so please double check yours yourself, but in this case, the trim pot end faces down away from the capacitor underneath. In a previous video, we established that our max current is 0.84 for X, Y, and Z, and one amp for the extruder. The documentation for setting the VREF on the Big Tree Tech website to me was a bit dubious. It translates simply to the max current divided by two. For an Ender 3, that's 0.84 divided by two and one divided by two to give us target VREFs of 0.42 and 0.5 volts. However, in the interest of keeping things cool and reliable, it's better to use 90% of this. So instead we're aiming for 0.38 and 0.45 volts. To set the VREF, we need to disconnect the 5 volt USB power supply and instead power the board by the main 12 or 24 volt power supply. We're then going to set the multimeter to the 2 volt DC voltage setting. After this, I like to get an alligator clip and connect one end to the red probe and the other end to a small metal flathead screwdriver. You'll see this makes things very convenient. The black probe can now be touched on the ground for the main board, and the screwdriver connected to the red probe can now be touched on the trim pot of the driver. This will give us our VREF reading, and only very small adjustments are needed to make a big change. On these big tree tech ones, you need to rotate to the right to lower it, which is a bit counterintuitive, so just take your time and get your measurement accurate. You can see here I have my heat sinks already in place. They are very important as is active cooling from a fan blowing over your main board. Now let's tweak the firmware. 
our changes needed in Marlin are minimal. In configuration.h, we're going to search for invert and go down until we get to the section on inverting the stepper direction. If you're switching from a 498 you will need to change from true to false or vice versa for each axis where you have installed these stepper motor drivers. Next, if we search for the stepper driver name, at the bottom of configuration.h, we'll get to the section where we can specify these drivers. Now I consider this an optional part because they will run just fine if you drop them in without making this change. But pasting them in this way is more complete. After you've pasted them in, make sure to uncomment the start of the line so this is read when the firmware is compiled. With an MKS Gen L, all you need to do is set your processor to 18 Mega 2560, your port and then upload. Now these steppers claim to be silent, so we'll begin our testing by looking at the noise. And again, I like to do my noise test while homing because it's consistent and there's no extra noise from the part cooling fan. Now it is improved over the 84988 drivers, but definitely not as quiet as the TMCs. And I'll have a back-to-back -back comparison later in this video. Now while I was doing test prints for the first time in this series, something was actually eventful. I noticed while printing that the extruder was clicking and seemed to be missing steps. This was confirmed in the final test prints. You can see some marks on the top here, but it's really obvious when we look at the first layer on the bottom. All of these vertical stripes here are clearer to see. On some prints, the Y axis was also missing steps, causing these frequent layer shifts. After upping the VREFs all around, it eliminated both the problem with the extruder skipping, as well as the layer shifts on the Y axis. If you're having troubles like this with any stepper motor drivers, gradually up your VREF until you find a safe value. The Benchy test at 100 millimeters per second turned out okay, the main thing to note here is that there's no zebra stripe surface artifacts. This carabiner also printed quite well. In summary, print quality from these stepper drivers was sufficient. Now that just proves something I said earlier in the series. It's very well to use maths to calculate the VREF, but ultimately the final setting should come with the rule of thumb that if the VREF is too low, you're going to skip steps, and if it's too high, your stepper motor will be too hot to touch while printing. Now, I was a little bit disappointed by how loud these were compared to how they were advertised as being silent. And then I noticed on the description for the website that they're meant to be quieter when in 1 to the 64 or 1 to the 128 microstepping mode. Therefore, I decided to set up 1 to 64 to see how that compared. We are targeting 1 to the 64 microstepping, but this may be limited by the 8-bit microcontroller's ability to communicate the pulses fast enough. For this configuration, we're aiming for low, high, high, which means adding in another jumper, so only the one next to the capacitor is left empty. Back in Marlin in configuration.h, we're going to search once again, and this time type in steps. That'll take us to our default access steps per unit, and since we've gone from 16 to 64 times microstepping, that's an increase by a factor of 4, and therefore we need to increase each of these by a factor of 4. That's the only change we need to make, so we're ready to upload again. Here's a problem that I admit to tripping over at first, and that's that after flashing the firmware, the changes for the steps per millimeter had not taken effect because the old ones were saved to the EEPROM. I therefore manually entered what I wanted with an M92 command, and then saved it with an M500. Here I'm connected via USB with the free program Pronterface, which works great as a console. Now the noise test was definitely interesting. For the majority of the time, this was quieter than the 1 to 16 setting, but when it got to that fast, rapid move, I think we hit our speed limitation and it sounded to me like it was experiencing some skip steps. While I was printing, however, even with my 100 millimeters per second base speed test print, I never reached a high enough speed for this to be a problem. Mm -hmm. 
And when we got to layer two and the part cooling fan came on, that was definitely the loudest component and the steppers were quite quiet. So some interesting results with these stepper motor drivers and that makes a total of six different stepper motor drivers that we've tested in this series so far. Let's go through them and we're going to start with the A4988. This driver is cheap and cheerful, proven and reliable. They're found on most 3D printers out of the box these days. The reason you would upgrade is to quieten your printer as well as removing surface artifacts known as zebra stripes. Now the DRV8825 definitely doesn't fix the noise and it's more likely to introduce further surface artifacts, but they can handle a higher current. So maybe these are suitable for a small do-it-yourself CNC machine or a really large 3D printer that's not going to be in an area where being loud is such a problem. Now, all of the other options I've looked at in this series will remove the zebra stripes and they are much quieter. Here's a noise comparison back to back. When it comes to being quiet, you simply can't beat Stealth Chop on all of the TMC drivers. And it's meant to have less torque than the alternate spread cycle mode, but on the end of three, I never found any reason to switch to that mode. On a larger printer with heavier moving parts, however, it might be a different story. If you've got a printer like an end of three and you're looking to make it quiet with as little fuss as possible, my strong recommendation would be the TMC 2100. If you're looking to have the flexibility to be able to switch on the fly between Stealth Chop and Spread Cycle and you want as little wiring to do as possible, then I would recommend the TMC 2208s. They're also the only drivers from those that I've tested from TMC that have Stealth Chop 2, which is meant to have even more torque for the same quiet volume. If you want the novelty of sensorless homing, then the TMC 2130 is your only choice. Now on the Prusa Mark III, the firmware is set up in a custom way that it can use that feature to detect when the skip steps, home the printer, and resume the print without a failure. But that's not available in the mainstream Marlin branches. Now back to that idea that the TMC drivers aren't suitable for the extruder. In all of my testing since I made the first videos, I haven't encountered any problems with them on the extruder. So although other people might have issues, there's nothing in my findings to support the fact that you need the LV8729. That's not to say that they're a bad option. They're definitely quieter than A4988s, but just keep in mind that to achieve that, you need to run it at one to the 64 or higher microstepping, and you're gonna run into that speed limitation in certain cases on 8-bit microcontrollers. Now, one important thing to note is that you can mix and match whatever combination that you like. If you wanna run 2130s for sensorless homing on X and Y, there's nothing to stop you from doing that and using a cheaper one for Z, which doesn't have anywhere near as much action and a completely different one again for your extruder. Hopefully with the conclusion of this series, there's some reliable information out there for whatever option you choose. If you have already upgraded your stepper motor drivers or are thinking about doing it, I'd love to know in the comments below what option you're going to go with. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.